they kind of end up doing anyway. I'm also going to explain the pros and cons to working the service porter job. Now, before we get in, keep in mind, I got two things. One, I'm personally not a service porter. I never have been. I'm a sales porter, but I, I've observed the service porters enough to know kind of, you know, what they've done. And I've asked them a lot of stuff about what they've done as well. So this video might not be entirely accurate. There might be some things I've missed in the video that you guys do that I just don't know about because I've never done it. But um, I feel like I'm probably going to cover most of uh, what they do. So it should be pretty accurate. Number two, all dealerships are different. Some dealerships, I don't really exactly work at a mass dealership as opposed to like, like a Ford or a Chevy dealership in the middle of a giant urban city where they would have car washes and, you know, 20 different Okay, so just like any job around here, the biggest thing you really want as a service porter is respect. Okay, you're going to be working around people all day long. And in the car industry, there's a lot of assholes, but there's also a lot of great people. But once you kind of prove to those people that you can, you know, do your job and you can do it efficiently, those assholes become, you know, come to respect you. And some of them will actually become pretty decent people from what I've learned. And the same thing is with the service porters. Also, you're working with car salesmen and you're working with technicians. If you ever need work on your car, if the technicians, if you get on friendly terms with them and they like you, they'll do work on your cars for almost nothing, dirt cheap. They'll help you out with whatever problem you need. And I mean, they're willing to work overtime, at least in my job. You know, you don't, sometimes you don't even have to pay them and they'll give you a free oil change for a pack of cigarettes. So just keep respect in mind. Also with the car salesman aspect, car salesmen talk for a living. So they get to know a lot of people. They know a lot of different resources. So wherever you're going in life, let's say you need an electrician, you need a plumber. They have sold cars to all sorts of electricians and plumbers, and they could probably hook you up with someone in a matter of a minute. So just keep that in mind. These people you're going to be working with know a lot of people, okay? They have a solid reputation out in your community. And if you ever need anything, they, they'll have your back until the end. They'll be able to help you with whatever you need. So I'd say the number one thing to have in the auto industry is certainly respect for others. Okay, so daily um, tasks of a service porter. Biggest thing for a service porter you're going to be doing is washing cars inside and out. Now, this will mainly be customers' cars, but you'll also be doing a lot of service loaners too. At least in my dealership, they make you do service loaners. Um, usually how my dealership works is once you get your car serviced, you get a complimentary car wash afterwards. And usually it's just the exterior. And then if you want the interior, you pay more for it. So at my dealership, like I mentioned earlier, we hand wash all the cars. So you'll get, you'll get like a big, um, it's almost like a mitt you wear big sponge thing, scrub down the car. You'll do the rims, scrub the rims with little sponges. Um, usually before that you have a degreaser that you spray the car with and the wheels and uh, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. You know, you wash the car, spray it down with the hose. Um, my dealership, we have a big machine that it's called, what, what do we call it? We call it like a lift. And it just kind of, it's just like a big rectangle and it comes down around the car and sprays the car. Now, if you ever wash a car, which you will, make sure, please make sure that all the windows and the doors are up and closed. I can't tell you how many times it's happened at our dealership, and I've, I'm guilty of it too, because as a sales porter, we wash cars too, where the window's been cracked or the door's been a little bit open and water gets inside the customer's car. We actually had one instance where uh, this kid, he dropped he dropped the lift of uh, to rinse a car, and I guess the window was just all the way down on the one side, and he just completely just ruined this customer's interior of their car. So I think this customer was, out with, was without their car for at least a couple of days. So you just don't want to do that. And I hey, accidents happen. A lot of times it really isn't that big of a deal. They'll just get a fan and, you know, within a couple hours, you'll be fine. But just, just try to make sure that everything that needs to be sealed is sealed. Um, also, when you're washing the exterior of cars, sometimes uh, some dealerships, I know we have one, we have a power wash system. So like in, in the wheel wells or in the engine bay, you lift up the hood, you can get all the little grease and grout out with the power washer. 
some dealerships require that you do that. Mine doesn't only if there's, you know, there's crap everywhere. Would you really have to use the power wash? But normally you just spray it with the hose, you know, spray degreaser, spray it over with the hose once, scrub it down. And usually, you know, there's not one of you guys scrubbing a car. There's like three or four of you guys all teaming up on it. So that's kind of nice. You never really have to do anything alone as a service porter unless you're a super small dealership and you're the only one. But I don't think that'll be the case. And uh, yeah, that's it really. And then um, once once you wash off all the soap on the car, we have things we call rakes. They're like little plastic, they have like a little like rubber plastic piece at the end. And you're just kind of raking, scraping off all the water. They just look like paint scrapers. And you're scraping off all the water off the car and then... After that, you hit it with a chamois towel and that soaks up all the water and you're good to go. Now, some customers will pay for the inside cleaning too, which gets a little bit more complicated, but it's not rocket science. You're cleaning a damn car. Basically, what you're gonna do first is you vacuum out the entire car. You usually would take the floor mats out if they have all weather floor mats in, which are the rubber floor mats. You're taking them out, you're spraying them with degreaser, and you're just hosing them off, you're hanging them up to dry for like a minute. And then while you do that, just vacuum out the customer's car, the seats, and underneath the seats, and in the crevices, the trunk. And uh, sometimes we have interior spray that we'll get like the door jams with. There's like mud on like the door sills or, you know, the center console or anything like that. And then um, sometimes, I know my dealership doesn't really do it anymore. They have you clean the windows too. You get a kind of glass cleaner spray. And if you ever do clean windows, I wouldn't spray more than like two sprays on each window because a little bit goes a long way. And if you don't rub in the glass spray enough, there's like, it almost looks like fingerprints on the window. It leaves like streaks and it looks real bad. So you got to make sure when you spray the window that you wipe it in really good. So, you know, that's usually what an interior wash is. Some places will have you tire shine the car for the customer, but I highly doubt that if you do that, you're just spraying it on a little, we have a little tire shine cusp. It's a little sponge and it's, Kind of got like a U-shape and you just rub it around the tire and send it out back to the customer. Okay, so besides washing cars, your second biggest responsibility is bringing back the cars to the mechanics when they when the customer brings them in. They'll usually pull them in like a service drive. They go check in with, an, with a service advisor at the front desk. And then the service advisor will usually phone you back there or next time you go up. They'll have you bring back the car to the technician, one of the technician's bays. They'll give you paperwork. It'll tell you, hey, you know, this technician, this car is going to be worked on by so and so. All you do is take the car, pull it back, put it in so and so's bay, and you know, give them the keys. So really all you do. Now, before you do that, though, um, at least my dealership, we have like a iPad that we use, and we videotape, do a 360 in and out of the entire car, get it on video, just so. The customer can't say, oh, hey, you know, that scratch wasn't there before. You know, it, you guys definitely scratched my car while you were working on it. And, you know, the, de the dealership can go say, oh, no. And, you know, pull up the video and go, you know, hey, look, that scratch was on the rear quarter panel before, you know, before you we even worked on your car. So just so cu customers can't get away with, you know, false claims and accusations, a lot of times they'll have the service porters videotape the car and then take it back to the technician space. And then once you're done washing it, so like I said, the techs will usually work on it. You get a complimentary wash, some, and then you find out, it'll say on paperwork, the techs will usually tell you, hey, this guy got an interior wash, or hey, just an exterior wash. And occasionally, some wackos don't want their car washed at all for whatever reason. So, you know, sometimes, you know, hey, just take this car up front. So, you know, you take, it, you take the car up front, pull it back in the service drive, you get out, you videotape the car again, making sure, you know, hey, we didn't do any damages to the car. Or if a damage did occur during work, you kind of have it before and after, just so the dealership can have it on record. So you videotape it and you give the keys to the customer, customer's on their way. We have is wash and gas service loaners. So basically, in and outs on service loaners are mandatory. Our dealership does them once a week. I mean, these things are getting loaned out every day during the week and usually on Saturdays. Our dealership cleans loaners, so we'll just do a quick exterior wash. It doesn't have to be anything special because it's not like it's anyone's car. But when you're doing a customer's car, you want to make sure you do a good job, especially. I forgot to mention this. A lot of customers will bitch and complain if you don't do a good job. And sometimes they'll even send their car back again for you to wash it. So it's better just do your best. Just do a good job and make sure it looks 
acceptable before you send it up back up front because a lot of customers will not be happy if you don't do a good job if you leave soap stains or if you miss a spot especially on white cars it's pretty important that you scrub it almost twice to get all the dirt off um so yeah you'll wash you'll wash service liners inside and out so just a quick vacuum and uh, you know quick vacuum spray and and wash um, you don't really have to tire shine those or anything like that. And then you also want to make sure all the service loaners are gassed up. Service porters are responsible for any service vehicle. So any service loaner, you are responsible for gassing up. So if you wash it and you see that usually my dealership recommends if it's like under half a tank, but service loaners may be a little bit different. It may be under a full tank. If you see, Hey, it's under half a tank. Go get a gas ticket from the front and go gas it up. And they'll teach you how to do that once you get the job. Because every, every it's all different, gassing up cars. Some dealerships have their own gas pump right on site. My dealership, we have a deal with a gas station across the street. So we got like a little gas ticket we fill out with a stock number of the car and a date. And we just take it across the street and fill it up. Um, another thing you're going to do is maintain the fluid levels for the technicians. So uh, basically not nothing like oil or anything like that. That'll be coming from like a distributor and get refilled and all that. But windshield washer fluid, you guys will get like a big tank of windshield washer fluid. And each tech has like four or five gallon bottles of windshield washer fluid. And you'll just, you know, when you see them getting low, you go fill them up. And you also want to make sure that they have like a decent amount of stock of WD-40 cans. If you see they're low on WD-40, go get some from parts and get some WD-40 cans or some glass cleaner cans or some, you know, rotor, you know, gum remover cans. So you just want to make sure that all the technicians are, you know, stocked in on supplies and uh, they're all ready to go. Um, another thing as a service porter that you do is usually you're responsible for the trash anywhere in the service department. So that's whether it's up front where the service advisor desk is and back in parts or back where you guys work with the technicians and in the car wash, uh, you guys are usually responsible for taking out the trash, um, and keeping the place tidy. I know some places in the back, some service porters will uh, run the flooring machines and clean up the technician's garage from oil spills and soap and all that. But um, yeah, I mean, if, if, if it looks like crap back there, usually the service porters are gonna be the ones to make sure that the back looks nice and tidy and is clean. Finally, you'll go on runs. And by that, um, usually that's something for the sales porters to do, or some dealerships have designated drivers that all they do all day is just go pick people up or go, you know, get something that the dealership needs at like a park or something or just water bottles. But sometimes if there's no one around, you will have to go on runs. I know our service porters took a car to the airport yesterday or something. So, you know, whether it's like the airport or, hey, we're low on bottled water. I need you guys to go up to the grocery store and get water real quick. Uh, you probably will go on a couple runs. Um, here and there so just be aware for them to pull you aside and be like hey you know we need to stop washing cars we need you to go you know pick up something or drop someone off or go get something so you guys will make runs it's not often but probably you know once a month or so they will pull you aside and have you go uh, drive a car and get so you'll assist uh, so usually your boss is the um, head of service so your boss is the boss for the service advisors, the parts people, and all the technicians that fix your car, and you guys. So usually the service boss will be the one that kind of fixes anything that's shitty in the dealership. So if like a garage door is broken or like a light pole outside is like crooked or something, it's usually service's responsibility to get stuff fixed around the dealership. So a lot of times you guys are kind of like the mules. They'll have you guys, hey, can you come out and hold the ladder for me for a bit? Or, hey, can you go, you know, help me screw this light bulb back in? Or, you know, and just interesting stuff like that. A lot of times uh, cars will die, like tow, you'll get tow-ins for service. So like cars won't run and the technicians will come up to you guys and be like, hey, I need you guys to help me push this car in the back. So that is a thing I did forget to mention. You will be pushing a lot of cars. Um, so make sure you get those muscles ready because, uh, yeah, you guys, a lot of cars will get towed in there and they won't even start up, let alone run. So you'll have to push them into the technician's bays. Um, 
So other than that, um, you mow. Some dealerships make you mow the grass and and uh, especially do the leaves when the leaves pile up around the doors and all that. You get a leaf blower. Um, mow the grass, do the leaves, salt. The, if you live in a place where it snows, you have to salt the drives and all that, and sometimes remove snow. And uh, sometimes they'll even make you plow the parking lot. But usually our dealership they don't make us plow. They uh, usually the manager does that or someone. So. But a lot of times they'll have you move all the cars if they need to plow the lot or you guys need to go get rake up all the leaves and or something. So you guys are kind of, you know, you're not only making sure like the back is safe for the text work, you know, it's it's clean and organized and tidy. But you're kind of responsible for like almost the entire like outside of the dealership as well, making sure everything is you know, leaves aren't, you know, cluttered up against the main door or there's not a big patch of ice in front of like, you know, the door or something, and, you know, so anything like that, um, any weather related issue or mowing the grass, usually uh, you guys will have some sort of part in cleaning it up, but it's really not that bad, especially, you know, you know you're a service porter, there's, you're usually never alone, there's usually a few of you guys, so it's, you know, everything's a team effort, which is kind of nice and just, you know get stuff done real quick. And um, the last thing I got is uh, shagging cars for the technicians. So uh, basically our dealership every 30 days at the end of each month, we do what we call a 30 day check. So it's, what do they have to do? They, they just charge the battery up to like a hundred percent and then uh, they just like check the oil and all that. It's just like a it's just a check every thirty days to make sure the car is still functioning properly and is you know clean kept up to date. So you guys will have to go shag those for the technicians. You'll find out that the technicians a lot of times are pretty lazy with going to get their own cars. They depend on you guys to go get their cars for them. So if they have a car that's not like a customer's car that just came in, they'll give you the keys. Usually you'll have a board. They'll hang up a key on the board and and then um you know you'll have to go find it for them. And so sometimes, you know, you might even have to like drive to another lot to go find it or walk all around the parking lot. So yeah, be prepared for that, uh, finding cars. So now one of the most common questions I get is, do you have to know how to drive stick to work as a service porter? No, you don't have to know how to drive stick. I know quite a few service porters that don't know how to drive stick whatsoever. Usually there's always like one or two guys that do and all the technicians will like if you're a technician Yeah, you need to know how to drive stick because you're gonna be working on cars that are stick, you know You gotta know how to drive something that you're working on but as a sir as a service porter No, you don't know how to drive stick you have a, a lot of opportunity to learn though I'm sure I'm sure someone will teach you along the road So, you know, it's it. No, it's not a big deal if you don't know how to drive stick at all now I'm gonna go over some of the pros of being a service porter so my first pro is the job's pretty easy. I mean, think about it. You're just kind of, you're basically just washing cars and you're just shagging cars. That's really all you kind of do. I mean, yeah, here and there, you know, in the job description, you'll fill up the, maintain the fluid levels for the tax and, you know, restock bottles of stuff and, you know, make runs. But really besides, I mean, 99% of your job is just going to be washing cars and taking them back up to the front and grabbing another one and bringing it on back. So, you know, when there will be a lot of times you'll see in your dealership when times are slow, you know, service is about to close for the night. There's not a lot of people bringing their cars in. You, re you won't really have a lot to do. I mean, half the time I walk back there and the service porters are, you know, just throwing a ball around or joking around with the technicians. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's a pretty easy job. I mean, you'll learn fairly quickly the tips and tricks of just washing a car efficiently and you'll get cars done in five minutes, you know, so... It, it is pretty easy once you get the hang of things. Um, the second thing I have of a pro is uh, kind of what I just mentioned. You don't really have to do too much. It, there's a lot of slow time. Now, slow time is a good or bad thing, but like if, I mean, if you kind of just like being chill and like going on your phone and joking around and talking and playing games and all that and not really having to do much work, a lot of times you'll even have, you'll even have time to like bring back your own car and clean it out and all that if you want to while you're getting paid. So it's kind of cool just to like not really, you know, have more of like a relaxed environment. It's it's, it's very stress-free. A, a service porter does not have a very stressful job whatsoever. So I think that's pretty nice. But I mean, no, don't, don't get me wrong. Like you aren't going to be sitting on your ass like all day. Like you are going to be on your feet most of the time, you know, washing cars, 
And a lot of those times, you know, like you have to get those cars through or the, you know, your service manager is going to get kind of pissed because people are up there waiting in the front, you know, and a lot of times, you know, they're there at least a couple hours waiting to get their car done. So, you know, by the time the car gets to you, you know, people up there in the front are antsy, you know, they want to go home. They've already been there a couple hours. So it's kind of important that you guys work quick and efficiently and you do it right the first time. But, you know, once you get those cars through, it does get pretty relaxed. And I think it gets pretty enjoyable if you work with people you like. Um, another pro I have is you get to drive all sorts of different cars. If you're a car enthusiast like I am, you'll get to drive all sorts of different cars. Now, if you work at like a dealership that has like exotic cars or something, you know, like let's say you work for Ford, you know, occasionally you'll get like a Shelby GT350 rolling through or like a GT500 or, you know, hell, even a Ford GT40. So, you know, it's kind of, it's pretty cool. You get to see all sorts of different cars. A lot of people will go mod out their cars. So you get cars with like tuned exhausts and, you know, new steering wheels, new rims. So you'll get to see a lot of different cool cars back in service. It's not like working up front in sales where everything is stock this, stock that, you know. There's really no personality. You get to see like the finished product of like how people have like tricked out their cars and all sorts of things. You'll get to drive a lot of different, you know, cool cars. You get to drive a lot of stick cars if you know how to drive stick, which is always fun. I always personally enjoy driving stick and, you know, different automatics, paddle shifter. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, driving a lot of cool cars, seeing a lot of rare cars. If you work at a dealership, uh, like that has a lot of like exclusive rare models. You'll see them come in every now and then uh, for service. And I think that's pretty cool. And you get to work with those cars. You get to wash them. You get to drive them back up to the front and pick them up and take them back. So I think it's pretty cool. You get to drive a lot of cool cars. So then you get to get close with the technicians and kind of watch what they do. You really get to know a lot of the technicians. They'll, they'll get to know you by name. And you'll get to kind of see like what it's like to work on the mechanical aspect of cars. You know, if you're thinking about being a technician someday, you'll get real firsthand experience of what it's really like to be a technician. You know, you'll see an everyday duty of a technician. You'll see the long hours they work. You'll see exactly what it's kind of like, what they do, how much time they have to do things. And a lot of the technicians are really friendly. So you can ask them a lot of questions and stuff, you know. So, you know, you kind of see what it's like to be a technician and, you know, you're working with the technicians all day. Usually, you know, you're in the same room as them or, you know, they're bringing you cars. So, you know, you can't avoid talking to them. So, you know, they get to know you by name. And, you know, if you ever need work done on your car, like I said, you know, at the beginning with respect, you know, a lot of times they'll be willing to do work on your car for dirt cheap. You know, they'll, they'll do an oil change for a pack of cigarettes compared to taking it to, you know, take five and paying 60 bucks. So. It's pretty cool to uh, get close to the technicians. The next pro I have for you, and probably the biggest pro that I envy service porters as a sales porter, is that you guys always get to work inside. Now, all dealerships are different. Maybe some of you guys have like a cleaning station outside or something that'd be kind of stupid, but you know, at least at my dealership, you say service porters are always inside unless they're taking a car out front or they're running out into the lot to find a car for like a minute. They're always inside where it's warm, out of the cold, out of the rain, out of the heat. So you guys get to work in, you know, room temperature, 70 degrees, and you kind of get to wear whatever you want too. I forgot to mention that. I mean, a lot of dealerships will make you wear a uniform, but if you're wearing like a hoodie or a jacket or, you know, you're not really exactly wearing the uniform, I mean, you're kind of like, you're, you're tucked away in the back of the dealership. Not really many, you know, too many people are going to notice that, you know, it's really following the uniform code. So it's pretty lax of like what you can wear. And um, yeah, you get to work inside. So, you, I mean, it can't really get any better than the conditions you have to work in. So that's kind of cool. For you guys is if the weather is bad outside, like if it's snowing or raining, usually you guys won't even have to dry cars. So like you kind of want to like hope for the weather to be bad because like you only have to do half of your job. So like you wash a car, you just kind of leave it wet. If it's a blizzard outside or if it's, you know, raining hysterically, it, it, it makes no sense for you to dry a car off, right? I mean, it's just going to get wet, you know, as soon as the customer take, as soon as you take it outside to take it back up to service, it's going to get soaked. So, you know, when the weather's bad, you guys kind of get to do like half your job, which is kind of cool. Um, let's see what other pros do I have for you? Um, food and drink. Um, you guys can really, I mean, at least in my dealership, like I said, all dealerships are different. 
Um, it, it's really relaxed. Like you can bring like sodas back there. Like our service porters, they order food off of like Grubhub and stuff like that all the time. So they'll get like or DoorDash or whatever the heck it's called. So they'll get like stuff like delivered to the dealership back there. Um, and you know, they'll just, they'll chow down while they're working and no one's going to give a shit. So it's pretty cool. You know, just, it's real easy to bring snacks and bring lunches and all that back there. So it's, it's really cool. Um, another thing is you're working as a team effort. So you're always working as a team. So you're really never alone on a certain task. Um, there's always going to be someone helping you out. Um, so that, I feel like that's really nice. It makes you get things done more efficiently and especially when you're a newbie, it really helps you out to learn, you know, to learn the process easier when you watch other people do it with you. Um, as a sales porter, they kind of throw you into the fire a little bit. But as a service porter, it's really nice to be able to always work as a team and, to, you know, get things done. Um, another thing is you guys will get a lot of tips from people. So now I said, you know. I said earlier, a lot of people will get mad, you know, if their car's not done right. But there's a lot of people that are real grateful for a free car wash. You know, you can't beat free. Um, so a lot of people tip you money and stuff like that. And I know at my dealership, you know, since you're always doing something as a team, it's not, you know, technically right to keep the tip for yourself. So a lot of uh, dealerships, what they'll do is they'll have like tip jars. And once you get enough, they'll like order a pizza or something for all of them. So you know, it's really cool getting tips and, uh, you know, turning it into food. And the last pro I have is that you can listen to music. Uh, they're not going to care that you have in headphones or that, uh, I know at our dealership, we have a big stereo back there and they blast music all day long. They don't care. No, no one's going to care that you're listening to music. As long as you're doing your job, you're getting those cars clean and you're pushing cars through, you're moving cars. I don't think anyone's gonna care what you're doing. So that's the pros for being a service porter. So last but not least, we have the cons of being a service porter. Now there's way more pros of being a service porter than there are cons, but I mean, with every job, there's always some cons. So let's get to them. Uh, the first con I have for you guys is you probably will get wet. I mean, you work at a car wash, so I mean, you know, it, it's just going to be natural. The hose is going to spray and sometimes it'll accidentally spray you and especially your feet. It, you know, it's going to be the puddles around. So you, you're going to want to wear like waterproof boots or like waterproof shoes because your socks and, and shoes will get wet at the end of the day. I can guarantee you that. So um, just be prepared. You will get a little bit damp. Um... The second con I have for you, if you're more of like an introverted person like I am, you don't really have any alone time, which kind of stinks sometimes. Um, I mean, you're always, think about it, I mean, you're kind of, at least in my dealership, the car wash section is real, real small. So you're kind of packed in with like five other dudes and there's really no other way to like, there's like no way to avoid them to, while doing your job. So like, if you don't like who you work with, you just, you, I mean, it, you might want to find another job because, I mean, you're not going to get away from them. You're always constantly working with people. So you kind of have to learn to be able to like socialize with people a little bit and talk. And a lot of the times, you know, like your people are real chill back there. I know all our service porters, I love them all. They're all really nice people and they, they like to screw around. They're real silly. So they'll joke with you and they'll talk sports with you and all that. So they're real easy to get along with, but it does stink sometimes if you're having a bad day or something happened at home that you just don't really get any time to yourself. You got to put on that fake smile and, you know, show up to work every day. So that does think that you don't really get much alone time at all. Um, the next con I have is, uh, as a service porter, you are doing the same thing over and over again, which can get a little bit of, you know, boring after a while, but you know, it's the job you signed up for. And sometimes days will be unpredictable though. Sometimes, hey, they'll send you on a run and you'll be gone half the day. Other times, you know, shit will break at the dealership and you'll, you know, they'll, hey, hey, go help so-and-so fix that. So, you know, there are times where you can step away from the daily job of just washing cars all day. But a lot of times you're gonna be doing the same thing over and over again. Um, so, you know, just make sure you keep that hard work ethic no matter how repetitive things get. Just keep working hard and keep pushing cars through. Um, another another con, now this isn't for everybody, so I wouldn't really consider this too big of a con, is you have long slash weird hours. Um, in my dealership, a lot of the guys are working for service porters. They're working like nine to six. 
shifts, which I mean, it's like an eight hour shift because um, they'll give you like an hour break usually in between. But if you're really busy, it's not uncommon that you skip your break and work nine hours straight. Now that is illegal. Like they are required to give you, I think at least like a half hour break or if it's nine hours, an hour break. But it isn't common. I mean, they're not really ever going to notice. So it isn't common where like you might need to just like go all the way through and keep working. But so the hours are kind of long. And since it's a dealership, they're also kind of weird too. Um, I know like most dealerships are closed on Sundays, but not all of them. Um, I know at my dealership, like we're open to like eight sometimes. So like your hours will never be like set for a week. Like you'll never have like nine to five, nine to six, nine, like you'll never have nine to six every single day. It, it just won't happen. Service hours fluctuate with the days that the dealerships open. Usually on Saturdays and Sundays, service is either closed or it's open a lot shorter length than it is usually during the week. So let's say like during the week, you'll usually work like 8 a.m. to like, you know, uh, you know, 8 a.m. to 5, you know, so you get that hour break. And then on Saturday, all of a sudden you'll work like 11 to 7 or something, you know, it's just, it's really weird how the dealership works. Uh, and so it all depends on your service department's hours, but just be prepared for that. You will not, I can guarantee you will not have a set schedule of like the same exact time every single day of the week it'll be different times during the week. So that's kind of a con because you don't really ever have like a set in stone schedule. And since the service porter job, you know, kind of has like a little bit of a turnover rate, um, you know, workers will leave, workers come and go. Um, you know, your hours are going to change with those with those people coming and going too. So you just kind of never know um, until you sign up for the job what your hours are going to be like. Um, <clears throat> um Another kind of have, I mentioned it earlier, people get kind of mad if you're not getting cars through fast enough or if their car's not done right. Uh, it's not common where our service manager will come back and be like, come on, you gotta keep moving, let's go, let's go. Um, so, you know, you just have to make sure you're working hard and if you work hard, they'll respect the hell out of you and they're not ever gonna yell at you. So just, just work hard, that's all I can say. Work hard and just have that respect. And, um, the last thing, the last con I have for you guys is where you work, if you're working next to the technician bays or even in an automated car wash, it's usually very, very, very loud back there. Tools are going all day long. I mean, think about it. You have like 10 or 12 technicians, so you're constantly hearing lug nut guns and all sorts of other crap along with, you know, blasting music and the machines of, you know, uh, you know, the thing coming down and rinsing the car. So it's very, 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 very loud back there. If you're not one for loud noises, this job probably isn't for you, but bring a pair of headphones or something. You'll probably be fine. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Um, I think I'm going to make a video about what it's like to be as a sales porter too. So check the description below. Once I make it, I'll throw a link in there and, uh, if you're applying for a service porter job, like I said, just work hard and have respect. I think that's the two most important things. Work hard and have respect. So uh, good luck and go get them.